My name is Cliff Walston. I'm joined today by my law partner, Josh Bolin, and Mo Aziz of Abraham Watkins. Together, we'd like to introduce you to introduce you to Miss Serena Martinez. Miss Martinez is the latest victim of the widespread Honda Takata defective airbag issues. Miss Martinez was severely injured when the inflator in her Takata Honda airbag ruptured, sending shrapnel into her chest, causing severe lacerations. Ms. Martinez has a few words that she'd like to say today, so at this time I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Serena Martinez. Hi, my name is Serena Martinez. On September 11, 2016, I got in my car to drive to work. I was three minutes away from home when another vehicle was making a left-hand turn and hit my vehicle. I was confused and in shock. I felt a burning and pain in my chest. I remember looking down and seeing blood all over my shirt. I was scared because I couldn't figure out where the blood was coming from. From, from, and I thought I was going to bleed to death. I tried to, I tried to get out of the car but the door was stuck. I was eventually able to get out of the car and a pedestrian saw me with blood all over my chest. So they had me sit down on the sidewalk. In the ambulance on the way to the hospital I was told that I had a large laceration on my chest and wounds on my hand. Since the accident, I have not been the same. I have anxiety about driving, and I am afraid to drive myself. I have nightmares about what could have happened, and I have trouble sleeping. I still have severe pain in my chest and worry about having to do another surgery. I was upset when I found out that the metal pieces from the airbag in my car caused my injuries. Airbags are supposed to protect and save lives. I don't understand how something that was supposed to protect me actually ended up causing my injuries. Thank you guys. If you wanna, if you wanna move these over. Not work for everybody? Does it work? Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Mo Aziz. Um, honored to represent Miss Serena with, in this case with Josh and Cliff. Uh, this is another case where we have a uh, inflator rupture uh, involving a Honda vehicle. If you all recall, earlier this year there was a Honda Civic that had a rupture that cost a 17-year-old girl her life. Uh, in this situation we have a 2002 Honda Accord that's at issue here. And like I have stated previously, it really doesn't matter if it's an Accord or if it's a Civic, if there's ammonium nitrate in these inflators, we're going to have these types of disastrous results. Talking about the incident in question here, um, I'd like to show you some pictures that, that we have of the vehicles and the evidence in this case. Below here, what you see is uh, Serena's vehicle, the vehicle that she was driving. It's a Honda Accord 2002 model, uh, was involved in a front end type of collision. As you can see, the impact of the collision is not spread into the occupant compartment and is pretty much localized around the front right uh, of the car. What 
we have here is her airbag. Uh, after deployment, the car is currently at our location, evidence storage location. But what you can clearly see here are three holes in the airbag. And what came out of these holes were metal fragments. Uh, two of them have been accounted for. Uh, we don't know where the third one is. What we also see here is some blood from, from her chest as a result of the injury. And we'll get more into detail about her, her injuries, but really what you can see clearly is an inflator rupture, uh, ammonium nitrate, basically exploded and caused that inflator to rupture and sent out these metal fragments at, at a very high rate of speed, uh, almost like being parts of a grenade. As a result of all this, what we have is uh, injuries to her She had s several injuries to her arm, but the major injury she had is to her chest, as you can see, which is from one of these pieces of metal that exploded. Again, this is a safety device. It's not supposed to cause this. Um, Serena should have walked away from this wreck. As you can see, she's been through a number of procedures, We're still treating for this laceration to her chest, and has, has some lacerations to her, her arm as well. Uh, the, one of the pieces of evidence that we recovered from the scene is the actual piece of metal that used to be on the inflator. Show you the, uh, that's, that's what's in the airbag, or was part of the airbag. Could you, could you hold that just for a second? Yes, sir. And you can see it still has her dried blood on it. And this is clear evidence that this inflator could not withstand the ammonium nitrate release at the detonation. And the detonation is what caused the, the metal fragments to go towards her directly and injure her in the manner that they did. Um, I can put this down here if you guys want to take some more pictures, but I would request that nobody handle it because it's still evidence. One last thing I'd like to say on behalf of Serena is that she's very thankful that she survived. Um, I, I asked her if I could measure the distance between her scar and her carotid artery and it's around three inches. And had this piece of metal or some other piece of metal, the other two pieces that came out of her airbag, had they been three inches over, we, um, she would have died. And again, we cannot stress enough the dangers of these ammonium nitrate filled airbags. Um, the case has been filed yesterday against Takata Holdings and Honda, and we, we seek to um, pursue this case for her uh, and prosecute it to its fullest. At this time, we'll take any questions. When did this happen, this accident? Uh, September, uh, September 11th of this year. Mm. When was the vehicle purchased, and were the purchased used? It was a new vehicle purchased in 2002 yeah. by, uh, by Serena's sister. Did she ever receive a notification that it was there was a recall on Takata airbags? No, ma'am, she did not. And how much is what are the uh, what how expensive is this lawsuit? What is the money that's down? We're uh, there's not a f monetary amount in the case right now. We haven't asked for a specific amount of money. We do know that she's going to need uh, plastic surgery, some type of therapy for the. Uh, extensive and deep wound as you as you can see it was a pretty deep laceration and caused uh, muscle and tendon damage so we'd obviously be seeking all medical and um, rehab type of expenses plus whatever is allowed under the law so you know what type of long-term effects are you anticipating from all of this I'll look at my brother 
answer that question. Ma'am, since the it, 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 case is in litigation now, um, uh, we'll reserve that for a later date. Should you speak any Spanish, Serena? No, ma'am. No Spanish at all. Anybody speak Spanish here? No. She was talking about nightmares and things like that. Could you elaborate a little bit about what she's been going through since the, um, the accident? Yes, ma'am. If, uh, if you're comfortable talking about that, Serena, you can talk about it. And tell them br briefly about uh, how this affected your day-to-day um, -day routine, or we can ha have Cliff talk about it. Can we put the mic back down a bit? Oh, you can just move here, Cliff. Or, yeah, Cliff, you can just serve Thanks, So in terms of the emotional strain and stress that this has caused Serena, she's had great difficulty in sleeping, has had an abundance of nightmares. Uh, as a part of, of getting her healed and trying to return her back to her life as normal as possible, she sought therapy and counseling with respect to these, uh, the emotional toll that this has taken on her. Um, so she's had great difficulty in, in fear in terms of just driving herself um, and she's relied upon family members primarily to take her where she's needed to go. She has uh, not been able to return to work since the accident. Tomorrow will actually be her first day back at work. Um, so Ms. Martinez is doing everything that she can do to, to put the pieces of her life back together to return to her normal routine um, and the therapy and counseling that she is seeking and will continue to seek in the future is uh, helping her to achieve that. Does she have a family? Okay, I, I don't think she's comfortable in discussing her family um, and, and work situation right now. She, I, I will say, okay, she would rather keep that private. And in terms of how many days she spent in the hospital initially after the accident, how many days was that? So she was uh, treated and stitched up in, um, on the day of the accident, September the 11th. She left. Um, she had the stitches. There were both internal sutures um, as well as external sutures that put her wound um, back together. It's left an, an indention type of scar because of the severity of the laceration. She had her sutures removed approximately a week later. Unfortunately, the following day, the wound reopened. So she actually had to go back to the emergency room a second time, have the wound stitched back up a second time. And then she had approximately a week after that incident, uh, the sutures from that second emergency room visit removed. Should the doctor uh, have kept her overnight, you think? Should she, should she have stayed there after the initial accident? I'm not going to speculate as to the standard of care or the medical treatment that she, that she should or should not have been provided. So what's your impression of the way Takata and Honda and other car makers have handled this entire situation? Ma'am, uh, our impression has been, like we've stated this before, this problem began in 2002. Uh, it's come to light now recently, but in 2002, when Takata started testing these inflators, they were having failures. And really what a failure is, when the inflator ruptures and pieces of it um, fly out. So back in 2002, they were having failures. Uh, Takara did not disclose that to even Honda at that time. And so it's been over a decade and a half since they've known of this issue. So obviously our position is that it has been mishandled by Takata and Honda subsequently. And not only mishandled, but they've also suppressed evidence of these failures uh, that, that happened in testing. And that's public record that has come out in um, litigation. There's nothing confidential here that I'm telling you. But they had failures in 2002. This um, product, ammonium nitrate, should have never been used in this application. Uh, they, sh they knew about it. They should have known about it. And when they did find out, instead of stopping the manufacturer, they sold millions and millions of these units. So this problem is out there. Um, I, frankly, I don't think they have a fix for it. 
they initially would say, well, it's not a, it's only a Honda Civic problem for certain model years. Uh, or they would say it's, it's only a Honda Accord problem, but we know it's an ammonium nitrate problem because just look at the two uh, incidents we've had in Houston this year. Uh, one was a Honda Civic, one was a Honda Accord. And like I said before, Serena is lucky that we don't have the same outcome that we had for uh, Homa Hanif. Were the make and model 2002 what? 2002 Honda Accord. Okay, and there was never before any issues with the, uh, anything involving the car, you know, the airbag and all that? This particular car, no man. No, so she had it for 14 years. And was Her family did, yes ma'am. Her family did, okay. Can you tell us how it happened? I know we're a few minutes late, but you just kind of tell us, you know, how, what were the circumstances of when this actually occurred? Sure, so uh, Serena was driving down the road uh, and another vehicle turned in front of her and failed to yield to her right of way. And it was a fender bender. You know, it was an accident, accidents happen and she, some other driver turned in front of her. Uh, she tried to stop but could not hit the vehicle. And at that time is when the airbag deployed. Was she alone in the car? Yes. In the, in the press release it says that you are suing Takata and Honda and other entities. What are the other entities that are included? Uh, those are all um, Takata and Honda affiliated entities. <laughs> so there's uh, TK Holdings USA uh, and then Honda North America, just affiliated legal entities. But they all fall under the Honda and Takata uh, umbrella. And what's the role of Mary Flores, the other driver? Is she connected in the lawsuit as well? Yes, yes. Mary Flores is the driver that basically turned in front of uh, Serena and failed to yield to her right of way. And so what are you seeking? Like, why involve her into the lawsuit? Is it because she caused the accident? And you it start, yes, ma'am. It started the chain of events that caused uh, Serena to get injured like she did. Had you confirmed, you mentioned that you didn't have a set amount that you're trying to seek around for the lawsuit, but there was something that was mentioned about a million dollars in damages? Uh, under Texas law, we have to plead whether we are seeking more than a million or less than a million. And in this case, given the conduct of these defendants, we are going to be seeking more than a million dollars. Did she have any other injuries besides from the metal fragments in this accident that were notable? Uh, yes, ma'am, she did. Uh, she actually had um, some injuries to her chin, under underneath her chin, which I think are from the, f the force of the deployment of the bag itself and also some lacerations to her arms. But nothing other than all from the airbag? Correct. Should she, in a normal situation, have just walked away from the detail? She should have walked away from it with perhaps a sore back or sore neck. And historically, do you happen to know how many of these accidents have occurred with these bags? But we do know that um, there's been over 10 fatalities in the U.S., several in Malaysia, and as far as injuries are concerned, uh, there's no real um, statistic to that uh, other than what Takata and Honda know. Anything in this lawsuit to prevent it from happening again, like a recall or something like that? So re uh, the, my understanding is that these parts are under a recall. However, if you or I were to go to the dealership and say, hey, I've got a recall vehicle, they don't have a fix for it. So it's an ineffective recall. So our hope is to bring our case before the judge and jury, present the evidence that we already have and will have on this case, and s seek to have these defendants change their conduct. Um, you said she didn't receive any notification of a recall, but was her vehicle itself under recall, did you guys look up the VIN number to determine if there was an actual recall? Correct, it was. It was. And do we know how long that recall had been in effect? I, I don't know the exact answer to that. Okay. So, um, is there any type of, have you looked into the fact that um, maybe they had sent it to someone else, you said it was a, a family who owned the vehicle? So no one in the family received any type of notice? Based on our, uh, our, our interviews, ma'am, nobody received the notice. And uh, I'd leave that up to Takata and Honda to prove they did send the recall notice. 
However, like I mentioned to, to the gentleman, if you take your car into the dealership, they don't have replacement parts. So I guess what they expect people to do is stop driving their cars and um, they don't have an alternative, they don't have a fix, they don't have an uh, option where you can turn in your car and get another car. Uh, and so practically that recall is completely ineffective. Did anyone in the family ever attempted to look up the VIN number to see if there was an actual recall? No, ma'am. And uh, as far as I know, nobody did that. And typically, people uh, don't search, you know, the recall database regularly to find if there was recalls. Okay. Because there's been several stories on this, and that's what they've requested people to look up if there's an actual recall. So I wasn't sure if they were familiar with the. the sure. Story. Sure. Is she the is she the registered owner? No, ma'am. It's uh, her sister and brother-in-law. You know, if Honda at any time has said, okay, we're just going to take the airbags out, if that's the only, if that's, if they off, has that been a fix that's been in play uh, where they can't fix it, so they'll just remove it or disable it so the airbag cannot deploy? So that's a, um, I believe if somebody wanted to get their airbag removed, that would be an option for them, but then you have a vehicle without an airbag which we know itself is a dangerous situation to begin with. And was it, so the, it was the front right side of the car that got hit, but it was the driver side airbag in question, the one that ruptured. And I also want to ask um, Ms. Williams' age. Sure, it's 42. What deal dealership did she or her family purchase the Honda support from? This was a dealership in Kingwood, and I can provide you with the name of that. Can you explain how it was a low impact um, accident and how she would have walked away with fewer injuries than what we see here had the airbag not deployed? Yes, ma'am. If you could, uh, let's just look at the picture uh, again. And if you Do you see. Mind standing and being on that side, we can sure. see it. Sure. So if you see, that's her vehicle. Um, and that's the front end, and she was belted at the time of the collision. And the way you can tell if somebody would have walked out of these is to see what the interior of the car looks like. So I've actually looked at this, I took this picture myself the other day, and her windshield is not shattered. There is no uh, intrusion of any parts in the occupant area. So based on that evidence and based on the speed of the collision, because it was not a high impact collision, this was in the Cinco Ranch neighborhood. So everybody was driving 25, 30 miles an hour. Uh, and based on the totality of the evidence, we know that she would have walked out of it. What was the address where it happened? It's on the intersection map. The, in, 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 the entrance of the uh, Cinco, Current subdivision, but we can get you the address. We've got the police okay. report. So it was a residential area. Correct. Okay. Does your firm represent any other Takata airbag uh, cases or? Um, yes, I represented uh, Huma Hanif's family, the teenager who died uh, on March 31st of this year, and we have some other cases under investigation as well. Have you received any um, statements from Takata or Honda, Honda after this regarding the incident? We have not, ma'am. We have uh, sent them uh, copies of our petition and uh, correspondence that we represent Serena, that we have the vehicle, we have the parts, and what I've invited them to do is come to the location so we can cut open this airbag. So what, what's going to happen next is that when Honda and Takata send their experts and engineers to the location, we are going to cut open this airbag, and inside of there is going to be the inflator, and what's going to be missing from that inflator are these parts. Uh, in, spe it's, it's, in specifically, these three parts will be missing, which will show to us that where the inflator ruptured, or basically broke apart. Do you know how much of a cost difference there would be for Honda and Takata to they pay their due in this lawsuit versus having replaced all these inflators well beforehand? But that's really a question for 
for them to answer. I don't want to speculate. Uh, I, 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 I just don't want to speculate on that. Would this be the third Takata airbag incident in Texas that you know of? That's correct. What's the status on the Kobahani lawsuit? That case has been resolved. Can you tell us what happened there? Like in terms of what was the outcome? I, I cannot tell. Okay. Other than the fact that it's resolved. Did you guys win? I don't know how you define a win, but uh, the case has been resolved. Okay. Similarities with, between that one and this one, is that the main thing pretty much from what you guys... Right. It's actually it, extremely similar. Uh, I mean, almost identical incident. And uh, the part that broke, again, I'll show you this. They call this the, uh, the bat wing design. That's, the, that's what Takara called it in-house, the bat wing. And underneath this part is where the ammonium nitrate is stored in the inflator. So when it detonates, it breaks off the part that looks kind of like a bat wing. And in Huma's case, the bat wing went into her neck and could actually be seen there uh, after she passed. In uh, Serena's case, the bat wing went into her chest, as you saw in the picture, and uh, three inches from her neck. So the incidents are extremely similar. Uh, and both are 2002 model vehicles, low impact uh, collisions, and um, ruptures of the inflator. Give us a little more history on the young lady that did passed away, what happened in her situation besides um, what you just told us? Well, there's been, uh, basically there's been coverage of that incident in the past, but what happened is she was driving in Fort Bend County in a 2002 Honda Civic, uh, rear-ended a vehicle uh, at low speed and got uh, airbag deployed and the inflator piece went into her neck and she died at the scene. And in this case, uh, Serena's car was stationary and was the other car that tried to turn across and, and hit her or were they both moving? Serena was moving down her lane of direction. She had the right of way. The other driver turned in front of her uh, and, and basically caused her to hit her, uh, hit the other vehicle and then come to a stop. And as you mentioned, they were all going around at 25, 30. This wasn't like a high speed. No, ma'am. There's no evidence at the scene. Uh, that either of the vehicles were at a high speed. Was the uh, airbag deployed on the other vehicle? I, I don't know that, sir. So how does the law treat the uh, driver of the other vehicle when that driver is clearly not responsible for the defect that caused the injury? How does, how does that work out in this type of lawsuit? Is it, is it kind of complicated or...? Uh, it, it's, it's not that complicated, sir. We just... Uh, the other driver's insurance would provide for it. So it's not a case against them personally or to go after somebody's assets. It's just part of the legal procedure to have all the parties involved initially. 